What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Silent Mike back with another video answering your questions from the comments below. Go ahead and give this thing a thumbs up. Head to the comment section. Let me know what you want me to cover your questions, life, fitness, nutrition, however I can help you. We'll cover them in upcoming videos. Be sure to hang out on Twitch. I'm live streaming every Sunday through Thursday. Silent Mike with two Ks on Twitch, www.twitch.tv backslash front slash Silent Mike, two Ks, I'll see you guys there. Diving into your questions. Why do weightlifters wear leggings? Do they help? Um, I think by weightlifters, you probably just mean powerlifters and weightlifters, although I think it is slightly more popular in the Olympic weightlifting community, although it's gotten very popular and trendy in the powerlifting community over the years. Um, no, they don't necessarily help. Uh, there is such thing as a squat suit or briefs, both single ply, which means one layer, or double ply, two layers, um, that they often use denim or really, tough material that can help you and assist you to lift more weight in the squat and deadlift. Um, leggings, I think, just became popular because of the mobility needed uh, in the Olympic uh, lifts, the clean and jerk and the snatch, plus you're often rubbing the bar on your body. If your clothes are too baggy, sometimes the bar may um, get caught on that a little bit. Uh, and then, then same with powerlifting, you know, if you're wearing real baggy sweatpants or something that's a little bit more restrictive, you're deadlifting and trying to keep that bar close to you, it may bunch up. Uh, and overall, I think one, just fashion and fashion trends, how it goes, but two, there is some function to it. Um, wearing shorter shorts always felt comfortable for me when I was squatting and deadlifting, uh, allowing me to hit depth without pants getting caught on my knees and allowing me to deadlift um, with the bar purely on my skin was a little bit more comfortable. Um, some compression gear may or may not help, but the type of compression gear that is on the regular market uh, will not assist in any lift. Although uh, it is illegal to wear some compression shorts in certain powerlifting federations, um, I don't believe it helps you lift weights at all. How many sets for deadlift? I know it has been asked a million times before, but I never got a concrete answer. Um, you know what that tells me, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, is that you never got a concrete answer uh, because you were asking the right people. And the, the, the truth is there is no concrete answer for how many sets in the deadlift. Now there's some very high level power lifters, um, you know, somebody like a, a Ben Rice, uh, who's a very high, left, uh, high level, I believe 105 kilo USAPL international lifter who probably does double if not triple the amount of deadlift sets in a week uh, than the majority of people because he's been training for so long he has adapted to so much stimulus and he needs that extra workload that extra volume uh, to progress his deadlift um, for a beginner you know five sets of deadlifts five sets of five in a week it's probably a great place to start. Three sets of five in a week, slowly adding load. Um, eventually, you'll need to perhaps change up your rep scheme, um, perhaps change up the intensity, how, the percentage, the load, how heavy, how close to the one rep max you're using. Um, and eventually, perhaps you may be able to handle more frequency in the deadlift, two, perhaps even three times a week in the deadlift. So there is no concrete answer. It depends on how experienced you are, how efficient you are at the movement, um, how strong you are, what your goals are, uh, and perhaps your training age. So I wish I had the secret number that if everyone deadlifted seven sets a week, they'll deadlift 900 pounds, but there is no such thing as that. Um, and that goes for all the lifts and that goes for all the diet, that goes for everything. It depends on um, you know, the individual's genetics, uh, their history and training, uh, how long they've been training the movement, and then how efficient they are at that movement. Oh, here's a decent one we'll end on. How often should you, one, compete in powerlifting? <clears throat> How often should one compete in powerlifting and is there such thing as competing too much, too often, or how long should one's off season be? Now, um, powerlifting is an odd sport because it's competitive and there's some people that really dedicate their life to it, but there's no regular season for it. So you can train year round forever. Uh, it's not like basketball where most leagues, uh, high school, college, professional start in October, November, and they end around March, uh, I guess professionally in June. but. Um, Powerlifting you can do whenever, there's meets whenever, and so technically you could probably compete almost every weekend near you if you wanted to, if you live in a, a populated area. Um, but oftentimes, uh, when we compete too often in powerlifting, the, and it depends on how you train, depends your experience, etc. but often when you're peaking or tapering for a meet, you're revving up for a meet, you start to take away volume slightly, and you start to add load as you get into eight, six, for two weeks out from a competition to prep your body to handle that one rep max. Um, so you're slightly, your fitness level doesn't go down, but you are more recovered and ready to perform that one rep max. Now, building strength 
takes more volume. So kind of the opposite of that. Uh, you want fatigue on your body. You want um, perhaps some higher intensities, heavier loads, but you also just want generally more volume um, sets and reps uh, to fatigue yourself, to gain that muscle, to gain that strength, which is kind of counter to competing. Now there's a lot of power lifters, especially at a high level, that uh, seem like they're training very high volumes close to a meet. And again, volume is relative to what you're normally handling and to what you can adapt to. So for those lifters, they still taper, take away some volume, um, but to the masses, uh, it seems like their volume is incredibly high. And it is, I guess, relative. Um, generally speaking, what I recommend people that are co really competitive and want to compete and like to compete is two to three times a year for powerlifting. Um, often, depending on your coach, depending on your approach, uh, eight to 16 weeks uh, for a prep phase into a powerlifting meet. Um, an off season is a good time. Um, a real off off season I think is necessary. Two to maybe even eight weeks of variations, lesser loads, and maybe even non-barbell movements to give yourself a mental and physical break. Again, for the longevity as yourself as a powerlifter, uh, it really will help. Uh, and then maybe, you know, another four to 16 weeks real off season well where maybe you're eating a little bit more you're gaining some muscle you're working on some weaknesses you're doing some things inside the gym that aren't strictly squat bench dead that, but will help you overall towards your squat bench dead exercises variations dumbbells bodybuilding etc 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 so um, generally speaking two to three times a year i think are good some of the higher level guys um compete sometimes when they're uh already mentally ready to compete and they're used to the preparation process and they kind of know where they sit. They may only compete once a year. Um, for me personally, one to two times a year has always kind of been that sweet spot. And for the majority of athletes that take things very, very serious that I coach a couple world record holders, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we kind of agree that one to two tends to be the sweet spot, not only mentally, but physically, uh, because it can be a real grind. It can be, um, kind of boring if you're just squat, bench, and deadlifting all the time and you're constantly in prep uh, and constantly being beat up because powerlifting at the highest levels, even at the intermediate levels, can hurt, it can um, not be the most comfortable sport uh, physically. Uh, and again, it, it is a little bit monotonous, uh, so mentally it can be difficult as well. Um, I hope you guys appreciated the videos. I appreciate you guys for watching. Give this thing a thumbs up, comment below, follow me on Instagram, let me know what you want me to cover in upcoming videos. Hopefully I'll see you guys on Twitch, again, Sunday through Thursday, and check out the new podcast, 50% Facts on iTunes. I appreciate you guys. Salam I'm out of here.